Mark chapter 10, verses 46 through 52. A very familiar passage of scripture. This is the story of a blind man by the name of Bartimaeus. This man was blind all his life. Imagine all your life, day after days, week after weeks, year after years. This man was blind. He did not have social security. He did not have a strong supporting system. He did not have a safety net. He did not inherit some couple of million dollars from his grandfather or grandmother. There was no life insurance for him to benefit. There was no trust or foundation for him. He was blind. And every morning his family will take him by the roadside so that he can beg. I can imagine blind man Bartimaeus thinking about a day where he will be able to take off or to just stay home without going. Because you see what it means if he does not go by the roadside and beg. So there was no food for him. He was a miserable man. He was tired of this condition. He did not see anything. Just imagine if you have no eyes. If you have no sight. You have no vision. What your life will look like. This was the life of blind man Bartimaeus. He was known in the community as that blind man. He was known as a beggar in the community. One day, Jesus was passing by. This guy heard a crowd passing by. On one hand, he said to himself, this is a great day. I may get more money. I see a lot of people coming. I can hear the crowd. I may get a lot of money and get myself a break. So I can... Imagine himself saying, if I can get some extra dollar, I may take myself a small vacation and stay home. And then I will not come here tomorrow to sit by the roadside. And then something happened. He heard the crowd passing by and nobody is giving him money. He heard the crowd passing by, but he's not receiving anything. He had to make a decision in his mind. The blind man said, I need a different result. So he refused to continue to do what he was doing over and over. But Myos, the blind man, understood that you cannot continue to do the same thing over and over and expect a different result. The blind man understood that. That you cannot continue to do the same thing over and over and expect the same result. So he needed to do something different from what he was doing. As he was seated by the roadside, he asked a question, what is going on today? And somebody said to him, Jesus of Nazareth, the man who healed the sick. Didn't you know about this guy named Jesus? He even brought back to life somebody who was dead for four days. Didn't you hear about the story how he helped a crippled man walk? Didn't you hear the story how a mute person was able to talk? And Bartimaeus said, what? Is that guy? Yes, they say, Jesus of Nazareth is passing by. And then he did something because he realized this was the only chance he had. Jesus was passing by. The man who healed the sick was passing by. I can imagine his mind he also realizing that I can get my vision today. If only I can get the attention of Jesus, I can recover my sight. So he started shouting, Jesus, 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 son of David, have mercy on me. Have mercy on me. He knew his condition. He knew he was a blind man. He was not afraid to ask for help. He refused to be embarrassed by asking. He even shouted. Something happened. 
The people who were around him started discouraging him. Telling him you are making a fool of yourself. Shut up. Do you think this man has time for you? You are a blind man. He has more important things to do. He does not care about you. Shut up. Shut up about miles. You are making too much noise. The crowd discouraged him. You know what my brothers and my sisters. When you want to trust God. There will always be somebody in the crowd. Who is going to come and discourage you. When you want to trust God. There will always be some voices of people who will tell you, we've never done this before. This is not possible. We cannot do that. There will always be somebody. Thanks be to God. But in Myos, the blind man refused to listen to the voices of discouragement. He turned down the negative voices he was listening to. And he shouted even more. He shouted, Jesus! Jesus, son of David, have mercy on me. He shouted because he was not embarrassed to make a fool of himself. Because he understood that forgiving to take place. For the process of giving to take place. There must be a willing giver and a willing receiver. But he also understood that God, Jesus, was a willing giver. He understood what Matthew 7, 7 says. Ask and it shall be given unto you. And himself the blind man was a willing receiver. He was willing to receive. He was willing to receive. He asked for help. We live in a time where we have been told we shouldn't ask for help. Just ignore Forget about your problem and everything is going to be fine. Asking for help is not a sign of weakness. In fact, when we ask help from God, it is an expression of our faith. Asking for help to God is an expression of our faith. I know we've been in places where we think we can handle everything by our own. Sometimes we think we are big time, we, we can handle it. Sometimes we are afraid or we are too proud to ask for help. I don't want people to know that I need help. But asking for help is a sign of faith in God. When you ask Jesus to help you, it is an expression of faith. Hebrew chapter 11 verse 6. Without faith, it is impossible to please God. Why? Because he or she... That comes to God must believe that God is and that God is a rewarder of those that diligently seek God. Without faith it is impossible to believe. It is impossible to please God. Without faith it is impossible to please God. Here's the good news for you and I this morning. Jesus heard the cry of Bartimaeus and stopped in the midst of the crowd. So it does not matter where you are in life. God can hear your voice. Because Jesus heard the voice of Bartimaeus in the midst of the crowd. Jesus stopped and he heard the voice of Bartimaeus. God knows you by your name. God knows you by your name. You are not a number. You are not just a symbol you are not just one in a series god knows you by your name jesus in the gospel of john chapter 10 verse 3 jesus said i am the good shepherd and i know my sheep isaiah chapter 43 verses 1 and 2 jesus god is saying god is saying that i created you i formed you in the womb of your mother fear not for i have redeemed you I have called you by your name and you are mine. And you are mine. God knows you by your name. My brothers and my sisters, this is the point of our identity. This is the basis of our self-esteem. God knows you by your name. And whenever you feel ins insignificant, whenever you feel insignificant, Whenever you are afraid, I pray you will hear the voice of God telling you, I know you by your name. So Jesus stopped and he said to the crowd, 
Brought him here. Brought him. Brought him. Brought him over here. The same people who did not want to hear his voice. They brought him to Jesus. And as they brought him to Jesus. Jesus asked a question. He asked the blind man a question. What do you want me to do for you? And I know someone. You are saying. Why did Jesus have to ask him that question? Didn't Jesus see that the man needs his sight? Didn't Jesus notice that this man was a blind man? He needed his vision. No, Jesus asked the question, what do you want me to do for you? In other words, my brothers and my sister, Jesus, he called Bartimaeus the blind man, the one who was marginalized, the one who was an outcast of the society, the one whom people think they knew what he wanted. Jesus wanted to restore his dignity by asking his input. Jesus wanted to hear Bartimaeus Tell him what he wanted because Jesus wanted to dignify him. Jesus wanted to restore his dignity. Do you know that our God is able to restore our dignity? Whenever we may be in life, God will always restore our dignity. From nobody, God can make you somebody. Jesus wanted to restore the dignity of the blind man by asking the blind man, what is it that you want me to do? Jesus did not assume that I know what you need and then I'm going to do it for you. you know how many times we think we know what other people need and then we know how to help them. We don't even hear from them. Jesus wanted to restore the dignity of the blind man. You know, the crowd did not want to hear anything. They rebuked Bartimaeus for shouting when he wanted to say, Lord, have mercy on me. They rebuked him. They did not want him to talk like our society where we live right now. We have a tendency to refuse to hear the voices of those who are in need. We sometimes are uncomfortable and refuse to hear the cry of the single mothers who cannot make their rent. We are uncomfortable and we don't want to hear the cry of the immigrant who are seeking for proper documentation. We are uncomfortable and we don't want to hear the cry, the complaint of a child in need of a good health care. We refuse and we don't want to hear the cry of the widows, the orphans and those at risk, those who are chronically healed, those without proper safety net. And those who have no adequate resources for their life. Yes, perhaps Jesus in this text is teaching us as a church to learn. As a community to learn to listen to the cry of those who have been marginalized. Or those who we consider the outcasts of our society. Perhaps this text, this morning Jesus is teaching us to learn to hear the cry of those in need. Yes, Jesus stopped and he said to the blind man, what is it that you want me to do for you? And the blind man knew what he wanted. Oh, he said to Jesus, I want to recover my sight. I want my vision because if I can only see, I will be able to take care of myself. I will be able to have a wife. I will be able to have a job. I will be able to take care of myself only if I can recover my vision. And Jesus honors this man. And Jesus healed the man. Why? Because Jesus said to the man, go your way. For your faith, your faith has healed you. The blind man had shown genuine trust in Jesus Christ. He has shown genuine trust. He threw himself into the direction of his prayer. He just did not pray and did not expect to receive anything from the Lord. There was a group of a men, a group of men and women who were praying somewhere for God to send the rain. Send us rain, oh God. They were praying for rain. When they finished praying and they were about to go out, only a woman, she took an umbrella. She took an umbrella with her. Why? Because she said, we have prayed for the rain. And the rain is going to come. So I want to be prepared. But many of those who pray for rain did not prepare themselves. They did not take an umbrella. Already a sign that they just pray with their mouth and their heart was not there. 
How many times we sabotage our own prayer? How many times we don't throw ourselves in the direction of our prayer? Many times we pray, God bless our church. Do we really mean that God will bless our church? How many times we say, God send us more disciples. Do we really mean that? Because when God will open the windows of heaven and send more disciples, are we prepared to love? Are we prepared to serve and walk with them? Oh, we are going to be uncomfortable because we want a little bit of comfort only to know the people that we know. Somebody said to me, I don't know everybody. I don't want to have more people so that I don't know. It's not about what I feel. It's not about what I want. It's about the kingdom of God. And God's kingdom is bigger than me. My brothers and my sisters, we've just prayed, let that kingdom come. When you say to the Lord, let your kingdom come, you are saying to God, I'm willing to let my kingdom go. And unless you are ready to let your kingdom go, then you don't fit to pray, let that kingdom come. Because when you pray that prayer, let that kingdom come, you are saying to the Lord, I surrender to you. Not my will, but thy will. Not my ideas, but your ideas. Not my preferences, but your preferences. Not my will, thy will. The blind man showed genuine trust in Jesus. And Jesus honored the man. And he healed the man. His faith connected to the faith of Jesus Christ. His faith. Was in tune with the will of God. Because Jesus came. So that we may have life and life in abundance. Jesus came to restore. Recovery of sight. He came to restore. And his faith. Was connected to the will of God. And the miracle took place. We too my brothers and my sisters. We were blind, spiritually blind because of our sin. And we walked into our sins without knowing who God was. The whole creation was cut off from God. All have seen have come short from the glory of God. I have seen, you have seen. None of us was ready to meet the requirement of God. God came to us through Jesus Christ. 